God's breakthroughs in our lives, you know, whether it be through healing, deliverance. And uh, today's topic is something that I think we need to get back to and in, in teaching people and in teaching and understanding and discipling people about heaven and hell are real destinations. Yesterday, I had the honor and the privilege to, 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 to preach uh, a little bit at my mom's funeral. And I had people stop me and they, they, they you know, at our graveside as they, they had a body and they were loading it into the ground and they were, I don't know how you did it, but boy, you did it. I don't know how you was able to. And, 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 and the message was, was, was simple to them. I didn't do anything. It was because the Holy Spirit on the inside of me gave me the strength to be able to do it. But I had a revelation of where she was. And I know that the separation is only temporary. See, when you know something is just temporary, it's just for a little while, you can deal with it a little bit better. You, you, can, you, can, you can understand that this is just temporary. All this stuff is just temporary. And see, that's the revelation that we need to have. And it only comes from the word of God. They asked me to do the words of comfort. I said, you know what? The only comfort I can offer you is the comfort that there is in Jesus Christ. Amen. See, I can say, oh, it's going to be okay. And all of that will matter. But that will fade away after a while. But God's word, if you got that, that's going to stay. And that's what we need to be able to do to be able to get people and point them to the word of God. When I can point you to the word of God, you can stand on his word. His, he said, heaven's may pass away, the earth may pass. He said, but my word will stand. And so heaven and hell, so many people live today haphazardly. And one of the biggest lies and the biggest mistakes I think that people make is they think that they have more time. I talked yesterday and I said that I was a brother who was calling and asking for my mom. He was only 52 years old and I, he was on his lunch break and I said, well, she's doing okay and everything. This was when she was still in the hospital and I said, but I know you're on your lunch break so I'll catch up with you later on in the week and never late, later on in the week never came. Amen. Before the next sunrise, the brother was gone. Now, he didn't know that that day he was having that conversation with me on his lunch break that God would take him in the middle of the night, but that's what God chose and God did. See, we think that death has an age on it, a time, or nothing like that. No, no, no. God's timing is God's timing. And so that's why Jesus says, today if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Today if you hear me speaking to you, harden not your heart because you know not the day or the time or the hour. It is appointed, it says, for every man wants to die. Then after that, the judgment. And so we're going to be looking at a very familiar text about Abraham's bosom in Luke 16, 19 through 31. We're going to hear a story that Jesus is telling his disciples about heaven and heaven. We get a glimpse here of eternity. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at the gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip his, the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I have been tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and you are in torment and besides all this between us it between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here cannot nor can those from here pass to us then he said I beg you therefore father that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, 
that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one comes from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if they don't, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Amen. Amen. This is Jesus giving us an illustration, a description of what happens instantly. And he was talking about the rich man and Lazarus, and he was saying how the rich man, now it's not a sin to, 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 to live or to have money. That, that's the, it, the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money itself. It's when I put money before I put God. It's when I put money before I put people. It's when I put personal desires and feelings and things of that nature before I put the word of God. But then here's this man who <clears throat> he lived very good while he was while he was here. And he and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was at the gate full of sores desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, and more of the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died. And was carried into Abraham's bosom. Another trans if you go on and you look at the word of God, and we're going to go, go get into this. It talks about paradise and it talks about heaven. But we know that this was instantaneous. The, the moment this person drew their last breath, they were in one or two places. And so and it says that the rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lived up his eyes, being in torments, seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. The, big, the, the, the term bosom, and I'm going to break this down a little bit this morning so we can get an understanding. It says Abraham's bosom also is translated as Abraham's side. He was by Abraham, and the Greek word is also translated Bay, a, a haven, a safe place, a quiet place. The bay is a place of refuge in when there is a storm at sea. A unique phrase found in the parable of Jesus describing a place where Lazarus went after death. The word kopos or kopo literally refers to the side or the lap of a person. It refers to a place of honor reserved for a special guest. Similar to his usage in John 13, 23, in the case of Lazarus, the reserved place is special because it is beside Abraham, the father of all righteousness. The phrase may be synonymous to the uh, paradise promised to, promise to the thief on the cross. We're going to get to that as well. Together, these passages support the conviction that the believer enjoys an immediate bliss at the moment of physical death. Immediate bliss. And for someone else, an immediate torment. Life and death in the balance. And it says, it goes on to say, it says that he cried, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, send Lazarus there, and they dip the tip of his finger in water, and they cool my tongue for I'm in torment. One thing that we get a glimpse of is that people are conscious. People think eternity, they just going to go off and that's just it. No, you're in one of two places. And so there's there. he was conscious. And I used to wonder, well, why would the Bible say that in, in, in this place of torment, Hades, that there's weeping and gnashing of teeth? I can understand the gnashing of teeth because of the fire and the pain and everything else. But the weeping comes when there's a regret. See, they remember when pastor so-and-so came to them. They remember when sister so-and-so asked them to church. They remember when they were invited to be prayed for. They remember all of those times. And the worst thing, I, 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 just, can, I just can relate it to, you ever missed out on something and you wish you had a win? You ever missed out on an opportunity and you knew that if you had a gone, you would have been a partaker of that? How much more all of eternity a person has in their mind to know that they didn't have to be in the place that they was in. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's some weeping right there. That's some crying that you didn't have to go there. It was just so easy and so simple as accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But somebody said, you know what, next week I'll do it. And next week never comes and then now they're in this hell. That's real. Amen. 
as I was speaking yesterday, and, and, I, and, I, and I, I had to let people know because I shared some memories and I teared up a little bit. I said, you have to understand that that was my mama. You know what I'm saying? So, so I, there, there's a spiritual side to me, but there's a physical side to me as well. So I, as I'm reflecting that I won't be able to talk to her for a little while, I may get a little bit emotional, but there's a resolve on the inside of me that knows where she went. Yes, yes, you're human. Exactly. We're all human. And Jesus, even though he knew he was going to raise Lazarus up, he said he wept. Jesus, the Lord of glory, he wept. And so here is Jesus telling this, 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 this parable. This story is actually true. And it says Lazarus wanted, well, the rich man wanted him to go to his brothers. He said, man, if you could just go to my brother's and tell them, you know, uh, that they don't come to this place in torment. And Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. There was no second chance. There was no, there was no communicating. There's no people, people who act like they got mediums and stuff. And they can talk to grandma and them from way back when and everything. That ain't nothing but the devil and that's a lie. And what they do is they fool people. And what God gave me a revelation on is when they're talking about that, I, I think about that because it comes... And that, that, that's important that we understand that mama and them can't talk to us no more. Dad or whoever in Pat, they can't talk, they can't send nobody. And what happens is they get into these media, they, these people who are actually communicating with demons because it plays upon their emotions and they tell them stuff that nobody would have been able to tell them. But I said, one thing we have to realize is that demons don't age. So if you're telling me something about something that happened 30 years ago when me and mama was in the room or when me and auntie or whoever was in the room, it's only because you had the ability to be there. A demon saw it and now he's regurgitating, oh my God, nobody would have known that. That was all you could, oh, who would have known that she gave me a blue shirt when I was five? The devil. Uh, uh -huh. The devil could have known that because he's, he's, there's no time. We think time... We, this, this whole concept of time, God sits outside of time. Eternity sits outside of time. There is no time. And so that's why they said that there's nothing new under the sun. That's spiritually speaking, there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new being created. The devil using the same tactics, the same tricks he used on everybody else. Has God really said? Did he really say that? Do you really believe that he means what he said, what he said, what he said? <laughs> 